the seaside village of Solver in the heart of Pembrokeshire. Britain's only coastal national park. It's a real footballing backwater from where Simon Davis has climbed to international stardom with Wales and Tottenham, once seemed as remote a chance as the place itself. One of his three brothers is a fisherman, and this is home. It's a great place just to come and forget about it all, you know. So growing up, he was great, and obviously to come back, he's just so far away from anything to do with football, it feels like, and um, yeah, it's great to come back. It's picture book scenery for a storybook footballing family. Here on the top of a windswept cliff with a slope almost down to the sea is where Simon Davis and his uncle, Ian Walsh, ex-Crystal Palace and Wales, both began their voyage of discovery, beating the system and the elements to go all the way to the top. Down here, you know, they don't play football in schools, so you can imagine how difficult it was. We had to come to like a, a sleepy little village like Solver and play our football, and then be fortunate enough to, to be spotted by scouts from, from different clubs. So uh, it's unique, really, you know, to, to be spotted in a place. It's an idyllic place to play, you know, on a great day like it is today. But as you said earlier, when it's rainy and it's windy up here, you know, you uh, you earned your corn, so to speak, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the games just played down here, wasn't it? It was yeah. so hard to get the ball on top yeah. of that bank. You, you, you started here at what age? Um, I mean, we used to go to the school up there and we used to have under six tournaments over here, I remember. Yeah. So, yeah, since then. It doesn't look much from the outside, but inside the Solver clubhouse walls hold a treasure trove of memories. The young Simon Davis, his fellow Wales international and uncle Ian Walsh, and even a certain David Gray, for whom the Babylon of Solva paved the way to become an international hit as a musician. For the man they still call Digger, because he used to dig up his parents' garden, the path from Solver to Spurs via Norwich and Peterborough was a long one. There's a local scout from St David's he was, and he was uh, he spotted a few players, and I say me and another lad, he wanted us to go up there. Went up there, you know, they signed both of us when we were 12, and. Um, if, you know, it was just such a great feeling to get sort of in, you know, we all obviously wanted to be footballers, but from down here it was difficult and to get actually in, in the cycle sort of thing was, um, was brilliant. The young digger was unearthed by the then solver under 11's coach Ron Bynan, a man with a scrapbook of memories, including the day 10-year-old <laughs> Simon crossed swords in the Welsh schools final with a striker who went on to cross the border to England. Number nine for Pembrokeshire was Simon Davis of Solver CP and his opposite number, Michael Owen of Rector Drew of Harden. Uh, I think a lad's a bit famous uh, himself now. <laughs> Did he score a few but, goals? Uh, yeah, I think, I think he got three that day. I think we lost 5-1 eventually. It was Digger Davis, though, who dug deepest to play for Wales. Well, Simon, is, your, uh, is, your, is that your first Welsh shirt? Yeah, it's a shirt I wore in the 21s against Belarus, yeah. So I thought I'd give it to the club and... And that was yeah. when you were, what, 20? Uh, 19, probably. Right. 19, yeah. And when you were about uh, nine years old, you wore this Solver yeah. Football Club shirt, which we managed to find. That's uh, yeah. <laughs> good memories there? Yeah, very good memories. I can't really remember much about it, to be honest. But um, Put it across your chest. <laughs> it's a bit smaller yeah, it's now. a bit smaller, but <laughs> it was good for me back then. Since then, he's filled every shirt he's ever worn with pride, passion and power, becoming a regular for club and for country. After more than three and a half years at Tottenham, though, there has been talk of a new port of call for Davis. Manchester United have harboured interest in the past. He had trials with them, but United simply missed the boat. They said he was a bit rough around the edges after the first, his first tackle of the game, where he got told off. But um, I couldn't understand that when they had people like Remy Moses in the side. And, yeah, so, uh, but, uh, but there you go. You know, they've had a couple of bites at him. They may get him eventually one day. <laughs> Digger would love it if he went, they might. You know, he's always been a big Man United fan. How long have you got left in your contract? I've got, well, I signed a new one last year. I've got four years left now. So, you know, until I'm told otherwise, I'm quite happy there, you know. If we can... You know, I'm sure we'll do well this year and um, everyone will be happy again. So Tottenham it'll be for as long as they want him until 2007. Whether Glenn Hoddle is still steering the ship then, though, remains to be seen. Glenn comes in for a fair old bit of stick. I mean, he has his, his ways of doing things. Well, how do you, do you personally view all that stuff? Yeah, it's obviously, he's the manager and you know, we're the players and we have, to do how, we have to play how he wants us to play and you know, train and everything else. You know, that's, it's his methods and um, you know, there's no problem with that. I think it's a lot built up out of nothing and, um, uh, you know, apart from, you know, it's, mm -hmm. we just go along with it.
And then, of course, there's also Wales, with Davies carrying the hopes of far more than this village community, edging ever closer to Euro 2004 and Wales' first place at a major finals for nearly half a century. Everyone knows how long it's been now, and I think that's why everyone in Wales is so excited at how well we've been doing to get to a big tournament. So it's a lot of expectation, but I say the manager's been brilliant. He just always keeps our feet in the ground and lets us know we've only got where we have got because of the hard work we put in. It's been as long a wait for Spurs as it has been for Wales, but just maybe the tide has turned at last. Chris Scudder, Sky Sports.